Nice. Yeah, awesome, man. Cool. Where do you fly to just here or do you go like. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice, dude. Oh, yeah. Eventually he'll shut up. No, keep Just going. don't talk to him. <laughs> Kono, right? Yeah. Kono. Yeah, don't forget to don't forget to record on the What's crazy? It's just cool. Just no, as I, long as the mic's in front of you, yeah. you're, we're good. It's super cool. <laughs> it's, uh, it's different, right? We're live? Yep. Are we good? We're live. We're here. We're live. We're live. Oh here we welcome, go. welcome back, dude. Boo dog. Yeah. Cheers, hey, Mike. Cheers, cheers, bro. Wow. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Wow. Thank you. This Thank you. It's awesome. It's, uh, it's been a while, right? It's mm-hmm. been about a year, and I think all these developments came within the last two or three months. So Damn. Yeah, and then I picked up Matt and Brian, and uh, Brian's not here tonight, but... Hmm, excuse me. No, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, crazy, uh, you, got, you got a team. You got a setup. <laughs> I was overwhelmed when I walked in. This is cool. Yeah, you got a little nervous there. Right? I was like, oh, it's, man. Just a, it's not just a little recorder and <laughs> me and you. It's like. I liked it, though. Yeah. Don't worry. Everything just gets blocked out eventually, <laughs> right? I like it, dude. Yeah. How you liking your trip back, though? Bro, it's so good to be home. Yeah, a lot of change, huh? So good. I think it was funny. Um, I haven't listened to our episode, but if I were to hear it, I, I think we are. if I can remember, our discussion was like, yeah, man, it's been busy family stuff here and it's like oh i just kind of want to you know go back and wait do this, when this. you when you wait when the last time you were on you were already out there right yeah so okay. i left in april then came back to guam in december for christmas and i was just like it was good to be home but i kind of want to get back out of there because i still didn't have that job i was still serving at the restaurant that's and i was right. just kind of like that's right that's it's right. good to see everyone but i still gotta fucking <laughs> do shit and then now it's just oh bro i love it for day one see my nephew my godson see my niece who I've never met. Yeah. And then the next day, the zombie ninjas, dude, I was like, I'm home. I love it. Yeah. Dude. Forget, I forgot how awesome home is. And I think you, I think you realize that. You went to school in Arizona, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's a, I, I, I told somebody on the last podcast, uh, it's like a reality check, right? It's, yeah. it's hustle and bustle out in the States and trying to do whatever you can to survive in a yeah. sense, quote unquote, whatever survival means to you. And um, when you come back, it's like, Oh shit! Okay, well I don't have to move so fast. Yeah. All I have to do is just go see people. Dude, I went paddle boarding earlier today. <laughs> Beautiful man. Like, I I think we take it for granted because like a lot of my friends and coworkers have been seeing like my snap and my IG, and they're like, "Dude, why you're not coming back? Are you? You're staying? It's beautiful." I was like, "Yeah, but." You appreciate it more when you leave. I, r- I really believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to be home, man. But what what make what would make you stay and what would make you not stay? I guess. Right. I don't know. I think you feel like you have unfinished business out there still. Yeah, uh, <laughs> considering how much you've accomplished in the last year. Yeah, man, it's weird. I feel like maybe like a good couple months ago, but where I'm at now, I feel like I'm kind of just warming up and finally got like a groove going. You know, I've been at this job now. <clears throat> a, next January will be a year. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I gotta talk about my review. <laughs> you gotta talk about that goddamn race. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm finally got a rhythm going. I'm gonna be doing like different type of events, and there's just so much to do out there, man. There's so much more I want to see and travel, and looking, I don't know. Looking, looking back on the process that you went through um, when you came back in December, you were, you were sort of down in a little bit, right? Because things weren't yeah. actually pulling through the way you thought it possibly was. Uh, you got so far in certain situations, only to be just be like. Like nah, dude. Yeah. And sorry. It was it was tough, man. I mean, in one side, after a while, I just realized like just enjoy the process mm-hmm. because I was so ramped up in like getting the job, getting the job, getting the job, and then it's like fuck. I've never lived in the bay. I'm meeting new people. Yeah, I'm uh, serving at a restaurant, but th- th- they became like my closest friends. Yeah. You know, other than like uh, the the Guam group out there, I-, I saw these guys every day, like hustling and bustling as a server, and it was just it was nice. Once I started enjoying the process, however. Nine months in, I'm like, fuck, I got to get that job. <laughs> what the fuck, man? It was, yeah. It, um, looking back now, I'm so glad it was that much of a struggle. Yeah. Because when I finally got the phone call, dude, I think there's two moments in my life. And it is not going deep and shit from the get-go. But <laughs> no, two, we can get deep. Oh, no, no. Can. no. <laughs> we um, can go as deep as you like, Maddie. I think the two most parts I remember in my life that I felt like I really accomplished something was one, 
2014 when I got the starting jersey on the Guam national rugby team because I came off of surgery. There was the first year that I didn't make the team. I've been fucking subs. So I came back and started and just holding that jersey. I was like, yeah, you know, I, I, I fucking earned this. I did it on my own yeah. through help. Mm-hmm. Um, same with this job. <laughs> I, did, I did it on my own. <laughs> with some help. With some help, of course. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to the gym by myself. I wasn't going throwing the rugby ball around by myself. But yeah, dude, it was that. And then I got the call. I'll, I'll never forget. I, was, I got the call at uh, 24 Hour Fitness. And I, I interviewed five times. So I was like, okay. I didn't get all my hopes up because it's like this happened so many times. I interviewed five people, ten people. One day I interviewed with eleven people, mm-hmm. which is like, who the fuck wants to talk to eleven people in one day? Right, right. You know. Yeah. Um, but when I got the call, dude, I was just like overwhelmed with emotion. It was like that scene at Pursuit of Happiness when he walks out and he's just clapping. Yeah. I, I took a photo of it. It was an alley outside Twenty Four, and I took a photo just to remember like the way I felt. Yeah. Dude, it was just like. <sighs> Like weight off your shoulders huge relief and nobody gave me pressure my parents didn't care if i got the job or not if i came back no one gave me pressure it yeah. was it was just my decision i wanted to do something i set a goal it took a fucking long time it was hard but fuck it was worth it man yeah what did you do to sort of keep yourself in the game without being let down by so many letdowns I'm not. Oh, well, I, I should rephrase myself. No, not no, no. so many let down. I'm not gonna. You're a fucking loser, man. Every you week know? he was getting <laughs> let down. No girl would want to talk to him. No one would want to hang out with him. <laughs> and no job wanted him. <laughs> man, Matt's been partying and drinking a lot. I wonder. If he... <laughs> um, I think what motivated me was the fact that I knew that okay, I'm not getting it, but clearly I belong there. Yeah. They're calling me back. If they want to meet again, I'm clearly doing something right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man. I think what I realized at the end of the day is it comes down to so many variables. One, I was, like, shooting for the fucking stars. Like, look back. I wasn't applying, applying just for, like, whatever job. I was setting, like, Google, Nintendo, Pixar, right, uh, right, Adobe Digital, all these companies. So I think that was one where I was like, okay, if I'm hearing back, I got to be doing something, right? So I just got to grind it. Yeah. Um, I remember you sending me one from Nintendo and... You're like, look how many people I have to talk to today. <laughs> this is a legit schedule. <laughs> Dude, I freaked out. I didn't want to respond. I'm like, oh, is this over a span of a week? Uh, but they had the time frame. I'm like, fuck. There's a lot of people. <laughs> so it, but it, the interview process is interesting because yeah. they essentially ask you the same fucking questions. Tell me how about yourself. They, they, they honestly care less about your resume. Right. Resume is what gets you, like, I guess, noticed. Through the door, maybe. Yeah, but it's a lot about timing. Uh, company fit you could be like even at the company I'm at I've heard like man we interviewed him or her they're great but I just don't feel like they have a lot of experience but I don't mm-hmm. think they would gel well at the company mm-hmm. so no it's a lot of that that's timing um, Nintendo was interesting because I interviewed those like 11 people and that was the third round and then when I didn't get that they basically called me and said you know we really like you but to be honest we think you're overqualified I was like overqualified <laughs> motherfucker you fucking kidding me overqualified for what <laughs> It was a marketing coordinator position. I'm like, how the fuck am I overqualified? So then they said, we, um, however, we Do really, you have another position like above that? Well, that's what they said. He called me back and he's like, you know, it didn't. Uh, we went with someone here, but we really like you. Mm-hmm. And we want to see if you'd be interested in uh, an assistant event manager role. So I'm going from a marketing coordinator to assistant event manager. I was like, all right, here we go. Interviewed with four. Sorry, you're underqualified now. Yeah. No, that's what they said. I was overqualified oh, no for the first. Way. I swear to God, oh, I was overqualified. And then the third one, they said, you know, we really like you. Uh, we love your story, but uh, we're looking for someone with just a little more experience. Wow. I'm like, dude, what? Very is there a marketing specialist number two right, or right. something that I could go yeah. after? Is that. What do I need to do to be a little bit more qualified or yeah. a little bit less qualified? Because yeah. obviously, you weren't really hitting the button, right? Yeah. So. It was still an experience. Like looking back, dude, I was nervous as fuck. Cause I went through a lot of interviews before that, but this was the first one. I was like, oh fuck, it's a big name. I walk in the office and there's like Mario Kart. And I'm trying not to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing out. I was five years old. It's super cool. It, it was, it was cool. Like I was like, fuck, you guys want to talk to me? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, but I'm super glad. This is why I say everything happens for a reason. I was glad that happened mm-hmm. because two months later, the head of all event. Um, marketing for US Nintendo messaged me on LinkedIn. I tripped out. Like, I thanked all of them after the interview. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, we really liked you. I really want to see you succeed, although it didn't work out with us. Have you ever thought about working for a marketing agency? And I've heard of marketing agencies, but like I said, I was like shooting for the stars. So that yeah. never like crossed my mind. But after he said that, he introduced me to a few people. He recommended some companies to apply at. Apply to like seven agencies that day. 
follow up the LinkedIn, follow up here, follow. I, I I got a process of like how to fucking annoy people until they respond, right. basically, and that's kind of how I ended up here. I saw Firewood Marketing. It was an event manager role. I applied. They didn't even tell me what the client was until the third interview. And they're like, oh, yeah, so I feel like now you've come far enough where we could tell you it's, it's with Google. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I went there. They didn't like me. Maybe you guys like me. <laughs> yeah. So You just took the back door to Google, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what I realized because everyone's like, why does Google and all these companies want to outsource? Yeah. It's because they do so fucking much. I bet. It's mind-blowing. I don't know if I could go into too much detail. Right, right. But uh, it's pretty yeah, tell much. us about that secret <laughs> software that they're using to record all our voices and our thoughts and shit. You think this Google Home is cool? <laughs> Waited three months. That Google Home is the shit. Is the shit. Uh, I don't know if you watch my Instagram stories or whoever's <laughs> watching right now. Uh, okay, Google, play me some Bob Marley. Here's a Spotify station featuring Bob Marley. Oh, God. Oh yeah. Wait, it's coming. It's coming. The Wi-Fi is slow. We're streaming. This is bad promotion for Google. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible promotion. Or it could be this. Oh, oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, Google, shut it off. No, man, keep it going. Oh, no, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta talk here. We gotta talk here. Yeah, man. We can play with it after. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just cool. I got a... Uh, I got one for an event I did where we, that was the prize to the winning team, a hackathon team. Yeah. And then after the event, they were like... Uh, Hey man, we're not doing any more hackathons, and you got like three homes. You got one? I was like, fuck yeah. Nice. So I've, I've always played everything. I'm just like, Google, what's the weather in Oakland? Oh fuck, I gotta wear a bigger jacket. <laughs> so it, it actually, it actually helps. Yeah, I see it being more useful in <clears throat> in the Silicon Valley area or the Bay Area or anywhere in the United States. Here, it's kind of like limited, right? Uh, the at least the uses it can be like Google. What's a buy me buy me something at Kmart. <laughs> Kmart. Kmart. The nearest hmm. Kmart is in San Bernardino, California. You're gonna get the hotline on Google, uh, Kmart at <laughs> number two one. Hello. <laughs> what? Yeah, coolest uh, thing. Um, my lady's parents got it for me. So nice, man. It's um, yeah, they they have it like connected to the lights. So it'll be like, okay, Google, uh, turn on the lights, and yeah, the light will be like. Oh, it's mm. connected to these lights. No, not these. Oh, lights. I wish. Shit. I wish. That'd be the yeah. Set the mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a Oh, oh, I think we need to unplug her. <laughs> no, be gentle. It, have you? So I tried asking it a bunch of questions, and you could even say like, "Hey Google, what's eight times uh, fifty-four or whatever?" You know, it answers, and it gave me the idea. Of, remember old school when they're asking the questions, "What is the answer? B, yeah. C, or D?" Yeah. And then I have Google like connected. The answer is D, yeah. <laughs> and everyone just goes. <laughs> That'd be so cool. <clears throat> yeah, man, it's it's crazy the way technology is uh, is advancing. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious as the way it's gonna work on this part of the world. Yeah, we kind of understand with how it's gonna work over there in that side of the world, right? But yeah. as far as this side, it's kind of a little bit more tricky. Yeah, I would think. And even even with the Amazon uh, uh, the Echo? Echo Echo Alexa, Alexa. it's very degrading. Have you have you heard people say that? <clears throat> no. Alexa, get me this. Alexa, play this. It's like yeah, at least this is like, hey Google, come on. Yeah. Come me out. Oh, it's looking at me. It's, it's looking, <laughs> it's looking at me. It's looking at me. <laughs> cool, man. But anyways, yeah, dude. Um, shit. Letdowns, being let down. Yeah, how did you handle the letdowns? We talked about the letdowns. How did you handle it until you finally got the final call and you're like, yeah, yeah, cool. I'm not going to lie. The first <clears throat> thing I did after I didn't get Nintendo, the second round, mm. after all, I mean, all those people, first thing I did was I went online and I bought fucking Lauren Hill and Nas tickets. Just two tickets. I was like, I don't know who I'm going with. I don't care. I just, I'm going to buy this. And I'd rather buy something like that than clothes. Some people, they get depressed and they or like sad or let down. They want to go buy like shoes or clothes or cars right. or whatever. Like, You're buying experience. Yeah. So when I went to the show, I was like, oh man, I was feeling like shit, but now I feel good. <laughs> Have you seen Lauren Hill? No, I Dude. haven't. I heard, I heard she's the, she's the worst in coming out and no, starting dude. shows on time and I, shit. I saw her twice. She was on time. She was great. Maybe mm. just over time maybe, she got better. yeah maybe that was 10 years ago story yeah. right i guess it was her Nas, and special guest which i didn't announce until two days before uh, -huh. uh dave Chappelle. nice fucking hilarious yeah yeah wow how did that work out jeez i don't dave know Chappelle opening a, a comedy act opening up for in Nas and dan lord a Hill. music act it was and awesome. not just a music act right legends mm -hmm. in in both in both their respects the interesting thing was uh because i've never 
been to a show like this when you check in like through security and give your ticket mm -hmm. they had these cases that are like you got to put your phone in the case and they wouldn't unlock it until dave Chappelle was done really so, that, so it was trippy being like thousands of people no nobody phone. on their phones nice it felt like days and confused yeah it was amazing or it maybe felt like the 90s yeah yeah <laughs> it was cool man like i actually liked it so more what, did, what did it look like what did the contraption look like uh, it was like uh i don't even know how to describe it I think i know there's a bad description but this is what it felt like it feels like a, a sock and you put it in you close it and it just locks mm -hmm. and you can't oh almost like a banker's um kind of bag with a lock on it yeah think of think of when um if you're shopping for clothes and that clips on it mm -hmm. you can't uh that's what's locking it oh, okay. and then you can't unlock until you go somewhere <clears> they <throat> plop it open until they press enter and it just goes tuk, 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 yeah tuk, tuk, everything opens all across the, the yeah. stadium mm -hmm. It was Damn. cool though, man. He he uh, he joked around about <clears> it. <throat> He's like, "Ah, shit, I don't want to do this, but I'm gonna be honest. I don't trust any of you fuckers." <laughs> <laughs> he was he was cool, man. He even talked about like how I guess he grew up from a pretty rough neighborhood, and he was naming all these rough neighborhoods in San Francisco. Yeah. And he's like, "There is no rough neighborhood in San Francisco. Give me a fucking break compared to like what he's used to in the East Coast." Yeah. So it was a super good show. Damn, dude. <clears throat> and that's the thing. That's the thing that I really. I don't feel like I'm missing out on it, but I would really like to enjoy it. Is because when I was in college, man, I had no money, dude. Yeah. You know, I had no money to do anything. Damian Marley came came through, and I had zero money. I was like, shit, can't even go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kanye West came. I didn't even have money. Shit, couldn't go. So did you see Damian or no? No, I didn't. I haven't uh, seen any of them, man. I always wanted to see him. Yeah, man. And so, uh, if if there was one thing that like that would convince me to move out to the states, it's probably like going to shows you know seeing yeah. seeing acts coming coming through the city every what month yeah so what about like this wouldn't you want to like <clears throat> try it out whether I it's would. the states or asia or i would I, I think about that too but it's um you're 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 doing it with five thousand other people in one city right yeah who are also doing it yeah. here is only a few of us handful of us who are <laughs> doing podcast dude and it, it's nice yeah it's nice to just not have to feel so competitive about it and you can do it because you love it and and however how whatever game you make out of it whatever it is right yeah and it's cool man i, th I think uh i don't know you, you'll probably disagree but i think you kind of set a trend because i've been hearing more podcasts coming out or streaming coming out. there's been streaming but like something like this it's very different and i'll never forget when we we're chilling with the boys and you're like i want to do a talk show so a talk show would be cool but then you said like First, it was in front of a live audience, and they're like, no, I want to do, like, a podcast. I was like, ooh, yeah. that'd be pretty fucking cool. Because yeah. no one was doing it. Yeah, Nobody's nobody. It. Nobody. Yeah, and I think I think um, podcasting wasn't even being really listened to. Oh, and I think, um, well, even nationwide, it's I think there, there's there been an influx in the last yeah. two years of the amount of people listening to podcasts, <clears throat> but also the amount of people doing podcasts. And, uh, yeah, man, I would, I would like to try try doing this out in the states but i think it'll be much much harder you know it's uh it was hard gaining some a little bit of credibility here like i was, I was telling kylie when she was on the on the show i was like oh, well you know she's like how did you feel when i was like hey so uh you want to come over to my house and talk to me for a couple hours i'm not gonna lie this is a little creepier it's like cameras everywhere sit right here pour your glass of red wine <laughs> Oh yeah. Sit in front of this camera. Google, lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is super dope, man. Yeah, thanks. And thanks. You, come a, you come a long way. Fuck. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think as long as you just keep pumping out, right? Consistency is key. Content is key. Mm -hmm. um, if, Especially if you're a digital creative, you want to keep putting out. Um, there's a lot of people that don't believe in that concept, but I think if you put out multiple things per week on yeah. different platforms, let's see you're you're being known on different levels right yeah uh you can accidentally hack into <clears throat> hack into different countries and all of a sudden you're you're liked in papua new guinea right or yeah. or even australia didn't you get a, a a view in papua new guinea or somewhere you got in a couple places yeah yeah, yeah. i get some views in indonesia too and uh, yeah. philippines and Fuck yeah. yeah yeah i accidentally oakland got a <laughs> 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 fucking crazy place like oakland people are listening to me there shit <laughs> What is it about Oakland that makes it so crazy? I've I've only visited there. I've never um you know, actually been there. I think the when we've been there, when I've been there is do you remember when we were in I was a junior in high school mm. and you were a sophomore. I know where this is going. And yeah. we went and we went over to that lake 
I spent some time with your family at your mm-hmm. grandparents' house in in uh, San Jose, and then and then we went. Was it in Oakland that we went to? Because I remember crossing the Oakland Bridge. Um, and we I went to a lake, and it was like bring your own meat. I think you and Chris did that. I don't remember crossing the bridge. What I do remember is that was the first in my life I saw you and Chris in a suit and tie, <laughs> or dropping at a hotel with a bunch of other young kids in a suit and ties. Like this is fucking weird. <laughs> It was only weird because like I've never seen. What is this, Dork Don? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. It was, it was Dork Don. By was, the way, it was. Was it? Yeah, it was dude. Dork? Yeah, it was a technology forum, bro. Interesting. Yeah, it's huh. a, and ev- everything, dude. <clears throat> so you walk in and there's a ballroom and it's a room full of like seventy-five computers and people are gaming on it. What? Yes, bro. I was wondering. I thought it's it was like crazy. some business thing that you guys were attending. So yeah. I didn't know what it was. No, nah, dude. It was a tech. It was a tech forum. Yeah. And uh, I don't know where Chris went on his uh, field trip, but my field trip was to the gummy. The gummy is. Um, hey, pull up the gummy, Matt. Uh, it's, it's where GM makes their cars. Oh. Yeah, it's their factory. So you weren't allowed to like bring cameras and stuff. I wasn't able to bring my razor. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> my T nine word. <laughs> G U M M I, I believe, uh, General Motors um, f- car factory, dude, and it was it was pretty dope, bro. You're like dude, you're in know. this like tram, yeah. and um, it's a it's a golf cart in the front, and then it's like just a train, uh, and it holds like four people, and uh, is it there? Maybe it was secret. Maybe we were supposed <laughs> to say only anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, How just, old keep, were you guys? just keep looking like it up. Um, or no, you, no, we're, we're juniors. We're, juniors. We're about to go into our senior year. Okay. So and and uh, Chris was just so out of place, you know. Chris is just this jock. What the fuck's (laughs) going on here? So you guys play rugby? (laughs) Nope. Um, Don't have any more. I think I think we um, we we got we we were well uh, acquainted with the hacky sackers and the troublemakers, (laughs) (laughs) the people who also weren't supposed to be there, but they just went anyways, right? Well, it was funny because when we would kick it, it'd be like beat up shirts that we were skating jean shorts and zori's like you don't have an order do you have an older sister yeah yeah okay yeah. i think that's why me and chris dress like shit our, our whole lives because we didn't have an older sister or anyone to tell us what to do like i see kids now like damn we didn't dress like that when we we're younger and it's because they all have older sisters like where the fuck are you going you look like shit <laughs> well thus we just like oh chris looks like shit i guess i should wear it like me that. i had a big influence on um on uh on, on a guy who my sister used to date when they were younger and uh, he got me into skateboarding got mm. me into punk rock music dude and got me into um, uh, ev- dude everything like that hacky sacking and just being a bad kid <laughs> no no <laughs> not, not being a bad kid but uh, it, you know it just kind of it just kind of like yeah. flows that way I, I think my friends made me the bad kid <laughs> <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever still uh, like when you see a board just jump on it uh, have fun or like, um, like skateboard not longboard um nah dude I don't think I can even ollie anymore dude yeah yeah, I I remember Chris was always like, yeah, you're always the one that was good at like old school tricks. I was like, the only reason why I did old school what, tricks, what like half cabs and yeah, or like the 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 I don't even Ronnie know Ronnie Mullins yeah. um, kind of side. Yeah, I would do those because I would see Chris gap like twelve stairs. I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna do this. I think the most stairs I've ever gapped was nine. Damn. Yeah. I think mine's seven. Nine's, yeah. nine's and dude, big. I think when we were skating, we were <clears throat> sixth grade, and uh, that was. Dude, so this was like sixth or seventh grade, eighth grade. Dude, I was still like four foot nine. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that crazy motherfucker. Yeah, there. so they were just these tiny little kids jumping off these huge gaps, man. Yeah. And um, man, isn't it crazy how we lived for skateboarding? Dude, I, I cringe at like when I see some falls now because like, oh, my knees, my shoulder. I think that's what prepped us for rugby when you hmm. think about it. Yeah, no yeah. one hit us harder than ourselves. <laughs> like falling into... Falling on the skateboard? Yeah, like, yeah. I thought when I first got tackled, I was like, oh, I've been hit a lot harder <laughs> by falling down. I had a skateboard whack my head one time. <laughs> it's way worse than that. <laughs> uh, but those are fun, man. Just cruising around Guam. I remember Tumon. It was Tumon, but it wasn't like now. Yeah. And it was so easy just to skate around and have fun. I was talking about this with someone. Isn't it trippy when you think about now when parents drop off their kids? How it's totally like you drop them off, hope you don't die. There wasn't cell phone. No one texted. No one called. <laughs> I hope you don't die. Well, I mean, that was pretty much it. Yeah, like, yeah. if I got dropped off to hang out with my friends yeah. or to go on a date and I, cause I couldn't drive, I would yeah. get dropped off. And if I wanted to get picked up, I had to fucking go to the payphone. Right. I'll never get the payphone at Cold Stone. It was the left of Cold Stone at GPO. And if I ran out of quarters, I'd be like, ah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which wasn't Cold Stone back then, right? Oh, yeah. What was I don't even know what that was. It was nothing. Yeah. It was just a blank space with a payphone. 
here we are. <laughs> yeah, man, it's um, <clears throat> it's 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 pretty crazy. I I think I think the we were on that tail end of technology, old technology ending and new technology coming in. Yeah, and we're that gray area of the people who had to like learn and not not actually grow up with it, right? So yeah. people like my sisters, um. I would say your youngest sister would probably be the last, you know, the beginning part of that uh, uh, learning, growing up with technology. Yeah. Would you agree? I'd agree. Fuck, dude. I didn't have my first cell phone until my junior year of high school. Yeah. And yeah. it was still had only like Snake, right? Where you have to catch Snake. the numbers and shit. <laughs> Snake, T9 Word. Yeah. Did you ever have a pager? I never had a pager. <clears throat> um, I didn't own a pager, but I had a pager just in case. Okay. I didn't know how to be read pager codes or anything like that. Yeah. Eddie was uh, good at that. Yeah, I remember that? Eddie was good at that. Yeah, dude. I, <clears throat> it's, I think when you're the you're the younger sibling and the older sibling is a little bit older <coughs> enough, then you kind of you kind of get an indirect um, uh, influence on the tech that they were using. So yeah. my sister was using the slow computers with the fifty six k and having to type on Microsoft Word 95 and shit like that. Yeah. And uh, pagers. My sister was, like, awesome at pager codes. <laughs> she was so awesome. My mom learned how to do pager codes. Really? Yeah, just oh, cool. so, you know, like, like what are these teenagers doing, right? So what got you into, I guess, technology? Was it just, like, messing <clears throat> around and you a keen your interest? Or did um, you have someone that was doing it? My older to? cousin, man. Um, my older cousin was really into into computers, and uh, we would practice hack. Like, there was websites where you can learn really? how to hack. Yeah. Wow. I never got really deep into it because <clears throat> it was too hard after level three. <laughs> 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 and you know, by then, you're reading source code and yeah. trying to, you're trying to get into a certain, you're getting through, like, locks and stuff, you know, and the password and stuff. Yeah. To get through the password, you just go through the source code, or you read through the source code, and then you just change the password and the username huh. to what you want it to be this was like something that taught you <clears throat> how to do it um it was like a game quote unquote game uh and you know my cousin got into it he was living in hawaii i was here and uh i was a big dork dude honestly i say dorked on i actually belong there <laughs> <laughs> i played sports but i wasn't like the huge jock i, I was more into tech into tech and and understanding stuff oh, never like get, that. I, I knew you as Boo Dog, the one that <laughs> stiff arm any motherfucker. You would always do the same move, but it would work every game. You would stiff arm and turn, stiff arm, turn, stiff arm, turn, and stiff it always spin. Yeah, with the long hair. I was like, damn, that's a badass. <laughs> I remember I grew up my hair because I, you grew it out, Eddie grew it out, Vinny grew it out. And I was like, man, I want to grow up my hair. I look like shit. I look like a furry. Because your hair mop. comes out curly, it's right? Curly. Super curly. I look like a furry mop. No one took me seriously. Yeah. I would want to hit me if I saw him. <laughs> I was fucking stupid. Look at that little asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> no, no, that's not what we were saying. What it's we were just, saying. What we were saying was. Saying. Yeah, dude. So he was, dude, super deep into webcams. Begged my mom to get DSL. Like, mom, can we need DSL. You don't understand. I can't do webcams on 56K. Jeez. You know, like downloading off, downloading music and downloading, uh, porn and <laughs> downloading software and stuff like that yeah 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 right yeah. and uh and dude i used to play age of empires for hours on end bro oh, okay. hours and hours and yeah. this is this is online gaming so i was yeah. i was into the online gaming chat rooms and just figuring out just getting to know the internet because the internet was still very young yeah. um i think it came out in like in 94 95 to the general public and then and then sort of was working out the kinks yeah. right <clears throat> and so i didn't realize then that it was so young it was just like whoa we're on the internet and we're talking to people yeah. on the other side of the world like oh uh 18 uh male no norwegian you yeah? <laughs> or norway right yeah. norwegian norway and it's like oh i better get out of this chat yeah. room <laughs> i remember just setting up internet uh setting it up you would turn it on and you'd have enough time to go do something. Yeah. So my thing was I would turn it on and go make some fucking hot pockets. Yeah. Uh, no, bagel bites. Bagel bites and come back and it's still <laughs> like it's still fucking loading. But it was just like the anticipation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What am I going to do? I yeah. don't know. Yeah, dude. I, I didn't. Um, I don't know. I And then I kind of fell out of it. You know, played sports, met all the boys and yeah. uh, kind of got distracted into into doing other things. I got into skateboarding. I was in like really deep into skateboarding by then. 
um, music, playing playing music, listening to music, discovering music, and I think yeah, that's sort of a self discovery sort of phase and phasing out of being a, a complete like nerd. I'm still a nerd. I fucking love tech. I love geeky stuff, and uh, yeah, that's about it. That's the way the ball rolled for yeah. me in the technology world. Uh, but I've always tried to be on top of it. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'm not. I'm not the. I'm not a Valena tech, right? Valena tech is like on top of it. Right? <laughs> it's a whole other level. Yeah, it's a whole other level, right? And me, it's me. It's like I understand it, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like go super deep into w- just one piece of thing. Yeah. Like I want to get to like, oh man, look at that, look at that. I mean, dude, all this took research, right? Yeah. And Which I don't know. Cool. It's 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 pretty cool. You know, the media, yeah. the where media is going and where technology is going and what technology is allowing media because when we were making videos for high school yeah it was <laughs> yeah it's bringing me back flashbacks yeah. to guam history class right 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 <laughs> and dude it wasn't on these dv cameras yeah. i mean it wasn't on these sd card cameras they're dv cameras mini yeah. dv tapes like Cassettes. tapes yeah. right? Cassettes. small Cassettes. ass fucking yeah. tapes and it was difficult bro yeah. it was it was hard and i just i was just like fuck this <laughs> There was no saving it on a drive. It was like if you pulled it out and all the things were rolled, like mm-hmm. coming out, it's like, oh, yeah. I never ah. seen that again. Yep. It's tangled. Yeah. <laughs> the worst feeling was when uh, your parents are like, we got to go return to video <clears throat> on B&J or Blockbuster. And you pull it out, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. It's going to be like 40 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Mama didn't rewind it. All right, just rewind it with your finger. <laughs> <laughs> that would take a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just. <laughs> <laughs> You you knew it was a long movie when there was two VHSs. Yeah, Titanic was, was Titanic, one of them. Titanic, and yeah. there was uh, there was one more. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, Titanic. Cleopatra. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, the Ben Hur. Yeah, that's Ben-Hur. what I watched as a kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> so if you could pick, I'm curious if you could pick like one. It's good that we're like you're looking at multiple things, but if you could pick one, and it's like I'm gonna throw throw it all in, do it. Would it be like music, podcast, something else? So far, it's been podcasting, man. Yeah, I've um. I've decided this year, uh, towards the end of this year, that I was into too much stuff. Yeah. Right. You're sort of spreading yourself thin when you when you create obligations. You start joining different sports. You start getting into different things like music. I can't. I can't. You can't do music and podcasting and you like creating music and creating podcasts. It's, yeah. it's like you literally need to just do that and then have a job on top of that. It's it's crazy, yeah. bro. Uh, but. Right now, I've I've put all in into podcasting for the last what three years. Yeah, Dude, I love it, bro. Yeah, music has completely taken a back back burner back back seat but of in, this whole journey. Yeah, but in 2019, the return of Boom <laughs> Baby Gun Brigade. Dude, that was a shit, man. I remember seeing you guys for the first. You know, I think the coolest part was like, damn, those are all the boys. Yeah. It was fucking awesome. But everyone's grooving, everyone's loving. Sorry to go sidetrack, but. I nah, hear you, man. And those, those were good times. What is that? Yeah. 2011 to about 2014, right? Yeah. I, I remember when I was at TPI and I was like, hey, guys, uh, I know Pepper's coming in. I got a band that could open up for them. <laughs> and people had to, like, win a Heineken contest. They're like, who's booing to be? I'm like, don't worry about it. It's fucking awesome. It's going to be the new shit. They're opening up for Pepper. <laughs> That was so cool, man. It was always cool to see you guys. Well, play. dude, you know you did give us, and I I had never been given the opportunity to thank you. I'm pretty sure no, maybe one on one, but publicly I like to thank you, bro. I mean, you've, do you you opened up those doors and you gave you gave us those opportunities to play those events, bro. Otherwise, I don't even know if we would have. I don't even know if we were actually good enough. Um, but shit, thanks, dude, bro. No. Like it's Valerie sold me when, when you guys played. Valerie was like, "That's my shit. That's my shit." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's cool. Would you ever? I, I'm not saying going in, but would you ever get back with the band? Like maybe just one night. Or Dude, I want. I really itch to get back into music in general. Yeah, you know, maybe it's just a couple nights. You don't yeah, gotta be taken serious. Yeah, yeah uh, I was thinking of some open mic nights and uh, or even just getting an acoustic gig, um, just jamming. Yeah. I, I I I fucking miss it a lot, right? It's um, it's it's been my life for the last since I was 13 or 14, just music, right, and playing in bands and. Yeah. Getting to know myself on a spiritual level, in yeah. a, on a mental level, emotional level. Because as a musician, and especially as a songwriter, you have to really tap into those sort of emotions that normally you wouldn't tap in to on a daily basis. Dude, I'm jealous of that, man. Because what I've learned, and I've heard this from multiple people, it's extremely rare. Again, we might get a little deep. It's extremely rare to find something that you're 
so passionate about yeah. like super passionate about like I, I i feel like i've done a lot of different things just like you because i'm kind of finding out what i'm passionate about yeah i wasn't i loved playing rugby was i as passionate as chris who wanted to go out of his way to apply to london new zealand go play in london new zealand no yeah. uh i took guitar lessons fucking sucked yeah. realized music's definitely not my thing i respect it yeah not my thing really I, you took your guitar lessons oh, was dude. that here it was in guam at i'm yeah. sorry I'm sorry. Um, I would only practice an hour before the practice. And not practice at all before that. Well, that's the one thing I realized was I love being outside and playing. Yeah. I, I, video games are fun, but if Chris and I or even myself played for like just one hour mm -hmm. straight, I'd be like, I got to get out of the house. I yeah. just always like to be around, moving, getting mm -hmm. dirty, have falling yeah. down, doing sweat. something. Yeah. Smell your, smell your ball sweat. <laughs> Down a fucking liter of a Chamorro punch. That was our way to hydrate. Like, down and ice it. Like, why am I still so thirsty? <laughs> There's 45 grams of sugar in this motherfucker. I'm awake and thirsty. <laughs> but that was it, dude. Like, I realized that's... Yeah, man. I think I'm still figuring it out. Um, since I moved to the Bay, I've done a lot of hikes. And that's something I fucking love. Yeah. Um, am I passionate about that I want to do, like, a two-week excursion? Probably not. But I might give it a go. Yeah. It's... I don't know, man. I joined CrossFit recently just to see if I'd be passionate about that. Am I passionate about it? No, but it's fun. It's yeah, healthy. What, did, what, what got you into that? Um, one of my best friends uh, back home, he's a coach there. He's from Guam, Ben Cruz. Okay. Uh, he went to JFK, and I knew he was coaching there. And, dude, this guy's fucking <clears throat> strong. He's like 15 pounds less than me, but Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's super strong and a super good coach. And I told him when I moved to – if I, if I moved to Oakland – I want to come check him out. Yeah. So I started going. Everyone was super cool, um, good vibes, and – it felt good to do something competitive again because you go to the gym or you go with your friend or by yourself you're staying healthy but it's not like we've been playing sports our whole life we're doing yeah. something competitive our whole life yeah. here i'm not doing anything but you get that sense of competition every time you go in a workout because it's timed everyone's doing it together uh did my first competition which is really weird i gotta say why in, in what way when you're playing rugby soccer football you're out there with your mates and you're focused on the game. Yeah. When you're doing lifting a weight, you got hundred, like ton of people just looking focused at you like. Focused on you. Just keep it tight. <laughs> lift it, Maddie. Lift it, Maddie. <laughs> I'm like, stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so fucking weird, man. Because and oh shit. I think that's your why buns are too <laughs> loose. Your buns. <laughs> oh, you're like sinking. <laughs> I mean, I respect it, but I think that's where it's similar to like uh, individual sports. Like okay. let's say. You're doing singles tennis or jujitsu or MMA or golf or whatever. Okay. Something where it's just you. Right, right, I've right. never been thrown in a situation where it's all on me. Fuck. Yeah. If I don't lift this shit, fuck it. Yeah. Got a protein bar back there. I'm not really I could do. Yeah. You know? So it was it was a cool experience. I think I'd do it like once, maybe more, two more times, like a competition, and then I kinda wanna try something new. Whatever it is. I don't Yeah, I don't know. It, it seems it seems like you don't settle too often, huh? A lot of people tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, speaking of spreading ourselves thin, right? I mean, like you said, we, I think both of us can attest that we have gotten into a shitload of things, but you know, I, I've settled a couple times with with certain things, and I've always known you since you graduated from college to be like, nah, I'm not satisfied. I need to, you know, it, I I've reached I've reached satisfaction. I need to move on to something else. Yeah. Like you went from working to with TPI to working with the government. To like leaving, <laughs> splitting island completely. No job, no no anyone. Yeah, like five people. Yeah. And uh, what what is it a what is it a do you think is about yourself that makes you not complacent with what you got, even though it's so good, right? Well, it was funny. I think you kind of brought it back to reality when I when we were talking at the White Elephant. I was like, yeah, man, you know, I can see myself working at Google or something else, but maybe another year or two, and then venture out. And you're like, damn, bro, you're a hard guy to please. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I don't Did know. Did I say it like that? Yeah. <laughs> you had a lot of passion in it. Jesus I was like, damn, man. Right. Maybe I said just <laughs> stick with it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think it, it has to do with a lot. And this is the other thing where we're going back. I think being out there, away from distractions, away from the norm. I love, I fucking love Guam. But when mm -hmm. you're away from it, you really kind of think more and be like, reflect more. Like, what do you like? What do you not like? I think me, I realize that growing up i had a brother who was fucking great at sports great at skating great at this i had cousins eddie and Vinny who were great at this great at that i knew people who were doing this and i don't want to say i compared myself to them but i remember at a young age like i didn't start on the a team of soccer first two years of rugby i played didn't start i basically had to always work to get to where i'm at and i feel like that 
mentality made. Com- well, you're, you're saying in comparison to your brother or your cousins where it was sort of just like they were great or good. They were really just good. always fucking starting. You're right, like, man, right. you're going to start and be the captain of the B team. I'm like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. 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 Matt, you're going to start the bench yeah. <laughs> and get us all waters. Yeah. <laughs> it's humbling, bro. I think yeah. that's all I know. So I think that's why I keep going. Yeah, yeah. That's... I feel like I'm the same way, though. Yeah. I've, I've Nothing came easy for me. Like, exactly. absolutely easy. That's what, that's I, trying, always yeah. had to, um, I always had to push. A, I felt like I was always pushing a little harder than the guy next to me. But yet the guy next to me was still like... Like pushing ahead, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. And I, I think also, maybe, I, yeah, I want to do something else, but I'm more comfortable in who I am right now. Like when I say I would come back, to, came back home and have a different mentality, different outlook, it's 100% true. Just because, I don't know, man. It's like, let's say TPI, for example. I think the only reason why I tried really fucking hard to do good work at TPI because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, even if no one thought it, I thought it. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's my family's business. Yeah. I got the job because it's my family. I worked my ass off, but I always had that need to like prove people that I didn't. I'm not just here because of family. I'm here because right, I worked my right. ass off. Same with Gita. Or, or just because just because you're working for family, you're not gonna work your ass yeah. off, right? And same at Gita. Like I felt like I did good things and I got promoted and it was a great experience. But at the end of the day, my uncle was the governor of Guam. Right. Was that was that a way in? Even if he didn't make make a phone call, but someone's like, "Oh, Matt Scrow was a plan of this." Yeah, let's give him a shot. Yeah. You know, this was this journey in the last two years is the first time I've done something one hundred percent on my own. Hmm. No one uh, motivated me to do it. I wasn't following anyone. I was just like, "This is me." And I think that's why, like, when I got the call, it was like so like overcome with emotion because it was it was that in the rugby where it was the only two times where it's like I was let down over and over and over again, and I finally like fuck. I did it shit man no mm. yeah i that's probably why well I, I think it also you know what you're capable of right yeah the possibilities because when when you come up short you re, you kind of think think back and you're like oh shit yeah. um, is this is this really is this really meant for me should i keep doing this yeah. and dude it, come, it, it came a lot a lot with the podcast right mm-hmm when 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 i don't get the when i get when i don't close the lead that i the of the person that i want to get on the show and it just doesn't happen i'm like oh man yeah you no know, what what am i doing wrong what do i need to do and should i just give up is there is there even is is that even a possibility like do i even want to do that yeah and i understand what you're saying by you know, really getting to know yourself in that sense yeah and i think the other thing is you just got to do like hmm. Like, let's be honest, like before you started the podcast, like look how far you've come and how much you've done. And it's purely off just trying it. It worked. It didn't work that. Oh, that was cool. We can improve that. We tweak that. Same with like anything. I know a lot of people like me where they don't necessarily have a passion, but they're just kind of like chilling or cool. But it's like the only way to figure out is just doing. I think that's why I'm doing so many different things is because I'm trying to figure out what that is. And who knows, man, maybe maybe I'm just blind and it's right there. Could be. Could be. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) But yeah, man, it's cool, man. It's been a fun journey. Yeah, uh, I don't think you answered why you're never satisfied. Is it? Did you answer it? I can't even. I can't even recall Kinda. it. Kinda. We, we we took we took a segue, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> why am I never satisfied? I don't know, <clears throat> man. I don't know. I think I'm just like you, I'm always it, looking to grow and improve because I have failed so many times, different times in my life, and okay. even even okay. if, if I've right. experienced sense, yeah, yeah. yeah, even if I've experienced success. To me, okay, I did that. What can I do now? Yeah. And I think the Instead other... Instead of becoming complacent. Right? Yeah, man. And the other thing is, again, this is, I'm not trying to read a fucking inspirational book right here, but it's true. One life, man. One fucking life. Like, try it. I remember Joe Rogan's like, if I could live nine times, oh my God, I would learn so many different languages. I would do this. I would travel. I would experience things. I'd want to cook more. I'd want to do this, do that. It's just, why not? Like, I don't really <clears throat> have anything else... You know, it's like, why not just give it a go and try new things, even if I found success in this? And maybe when I eventually find something that's my passion, yeah. maybe that's when I'll settle. Hmm. You know, that that could be it. I don't, I don't know. Do I want to do events my whole life? No. Fuck that. Yeah. It's it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking exhausting, dude. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was thinking about that. Um, it was Q3 of this last year uh-huh. uh, like love the job I was learning a lot traveling a lot it was great but there was three months like two to three months where I felt like I was working 12 to 16 hour days every day and working on the weekends 
while on top doing like fun shit. And I remember like taking a step back and it's like, do I really want to do business my entire life? Like I know my family has always been involved with it. Clearly I have some kind of knack for it. Am I great? Fuck no, but you know, I try. Um, but do I want to do this the rest of my life? I don't know. So it's moments like that, man, where it's like no one around and you just, you're just there with your thoughts. It's just there with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's important to um, talk talk to yourself every now and then as a man, right? Yeah. Just just to get a sense of where you're at and where you want to be. Yeah. Because, <clears throat> shit, I do that a lot. I think the most sane people probably do that. Yeah. You, know, you have to. You have to really reevaluate what you're doing. And if you're not, then that mean, that just means like you're okay with where you're at. And that's that's okay, too. But how long is that going to last? Right? Yeah. And I, 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 feel, I feel you on you know not being satisfied i understand where you're coming from but it's um it, it might be a double-edged sword right i mean or i don't even know if that's the right no, term to no, use no, it, it, it makes it, sense it might be like a blessing and a curse and that's what i said earlier it's like this has been my biggest strength and my biggest setback because i've been so focused on the next the next the next like everyone tells me that like why don't you do chill yeah enjoy i'm like i'm enjoying it <laughs> what are we gonna do tomorrow <laughs> that was fun show. what are we doing tomorrow you know, um, yeah, man. And who knows? It could be like maybe I'm gonna fucking be passionate about becoming a dad one day or right. having a family. That could very much be it. I'm just like, I'm done. I'll do right. what I have to do to provide for them, and that's it. Cause I found my passion. Yeah. You know, so it'll come, man. I have no doubt. I'm not searching because I'm lost. I'm searching because I'm curious. Curious. Yeah. Curious. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm curious of how someone like you could be so passionate about this. Um, I think the reason why I love going to concerts and out of all the events I've ever done, why concerts were the most attractive to me, I was never musically gifted to understand it, but the process of it intrigued me. Right. These people are so passionate about what they're doing, they don't give a fuck if they're performing in front of five people or 5,000 people. Yeah. They're doing it because they fucking love this. And they're feeding off of energy that people that, that do like their shit, yeah, right? Yeah, man. And to see people like genuinely happy... And <clears throat> put on like that's what I loved. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like what I do is like, it's events that make Google more money, or it's events that like business to business, which is great. Yeah. But it would was you more. Ever, would you ever think about opening up your own business? Nah. If I will, <clears throat> I've thought about it, and if I were, it would not have anything to do with events or production. Believe it or not, hmm. it wouldn't. Um, I don't know. It'll be like a candy store. <laughs> Could be <laughs> Sour Patch Kids, yeah. Jamoro Punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I don't know, man. But for now, this is definitely the happiest I've been. Like, yeah. s- like I said, being home, finally doing something for myself out there, but coming back here and like seeing my godson, seeing my niece, seeing the boys. Uh, did you read that book, the one I told you about, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck? No, I haven't. Great fucking book. Yeah, I've been um, listening to Gary Vee. It's, I, I feel like that's a that's a that's a that's very a close. <laughs> <laughs> not giving a fuck. Yeah, that, that's a that's a very close. Uh, yeah. I mean, like listening there to that book. Yeah. One of the biggest things I took away was it was every time I'd come back home or go somewhere, I'd want to like, um, like see everybody, everyone who I've ever crossed paths with and be friends with and make time for them and do this. But dude, he gets a certain age where it's like, I really only want to hang out with people I give a shit about and that give a shit about me. Yeah. You know, um, it sucks where I'm sure you had great friends in college. Do you, do you talk to them anymore? Um, there's only like a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah a handful. Yeah, yeah. Same here. I had a bunch of friends and I wondered like, fuck, it sucks we lost uh, touch and this and that. But I realized like that was your life at that point and now <clears throat> this is your new life. There's a new group of friends and it just keeps evolving. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, the even the, the people who were from Guam that I went out to, you know, that I hung out there in the States – there we're all here yeah. most of us are here and we're all living our own completely different lives and that's the crazy thing about about being from guam and then going out to the states meeting people like you know i think rarely does it happen when you move back that you're actually the same way the friendship mm-hmm. was yeah. out in the states yeah which sucks but that's just like the reality it's life right? people change priorities change right yeah man but if, if you were to i'm curious if you were to like up and leave would you be curious on like the states asia pacific islands because you're talking about even doing like i love the podcast of the pacific idea where there's like a voice for there's a fucking big area man that i feel like it's very untapped like you said there's a lot of competition in the u.s there's different podcasts in like china japan korea but like in within micronesia marianas samoa tonga fiji oh everywhere like i would love to travel to different places and do a podcast i mean at least within the within the pacific 
uh, would I consider moving? Man, it's hard, man. Yeah. It's really hard. Um, I feel like Guam is going through something right now, mm-hmm. and I want to be a part of it. Hell yeah. I literally want to be a part of what's happening here. There's so there's there's a there's a a, a sort of revolution happening. People are becoming awake, right? Whether it's cultural, whether it's artistically, whether it's, it's business back? way. Um, for the cultural ignited? side, yeah. that kind of ignited the cultural aspect of it. But look at musicians. You know, over the last couple of years, how many albums came out? Look how many businesses. Look how many fucking food trucks there are now, yeah. right? Look how many. Look how many local business. Look at Tomas Rojas down here, at Tommy's. Yeah. It's something's happening, bro. Yeah. I don't I don't I, I, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is exactly, but I see it. And I see it because I talk to you know, I talk to people who are are doing shit here, mm-hmm. right? Who are who have quit their jobs completely to to open up their own thing or become their own brand. Look at Frank, right? Mm-hmm. You know, he became his own brand. He ended up in the UFC. Yeah. Um look at Look at Tommy, right? Yeah. Opened up pizza, opened up the pizza shop. Been practicing his pizza skills for the last three years before he opened up. And nobody knew really? that. Yeah. Three years. Damn. Yeah. Shit. He was, uh, I think, I think he was, um, he was selling pizzas out of his house at the, uh, at the alumni tournament. I remember that. I yeah. remember, I thought the shop was already open. No. Nah. Fuck. Good and for him. Yeah. Where again is it located? I gotta go check his <laughs> Dude, just right over here. Right here? Yeah, yeah. It's awesome coming, man. <laughs> coming for good things <laughs> I, I have heard uh and actually no he dropped one off to Guido when i was working there i guess his cousin okay was working there when i was working there and i forget what it was but it was super good yeah maybe there what do you think is there just like tapping into like the opportunity because there is a I lot think of opportunity there is there um i think people are realizing how open a market here it is here on guam yeah and why are we gonna let why are we gonna let outsiders or foreigners take advantage of the opportunities that is clearly here for us to take advantage of. Yeah. And, but the, but the, the next question is why aren't, why aren't more people taking advantage of this clear opportunity? It is to start your own business. I got a business license in two days. I mean, one day, I'm sorry, one day I freaked out. I was like, Holy shit, that was pretty easy. And it took me nine months to do it. Yeah. I just, you just have to actually go out and do it. That's it right there. That's it. Doing it. Everyone thinks it's too hard. I don't want to get rejected. I don't want it to fail. I don't want this. Just fucking do it. Yeah. Uh, who who was I talking? Was I fucking talking to? Someone? I was talking to Pete. You know how passionate Pete is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, told me it's like it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, everybody wants to come out with this perfect product. Product. Yeah. Coming out. Oh, it's I'm hiding it. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide it and don't tell anybody I'm doing it until it's absolutely perfect so I can kill it. Nah, fucking just put it out there, even though it sucks. You yeah. know. So that you can see it and see what what adjustments you need to make along the way yeah. so that you can look back. Like I look back on the podcast prior to 50, 30. Yeah. Oh, my God. I cringe. I, did, I literally cringe, you, dude. I'm you, like, oh, my God. Uh, I do, just turn it off. <laughs> you, you did one when it was by yourself. Yeah. Um, that's when I went to Thailand. Yeah. yeah. I remember that one. That was the only one I was like, hmm, interesting. I haven't heard of this one before. Yeah. It was... Um, that was that was interesting yeah you're well, right well because you just came off like a super i don't want to say maybe inspirational is the right word but it came off a trip where it was just you yeah i don't think you've done anything like that before no you know so you're just like fuck i gotta it was gotta super spiritual people. yeah um it was incredibly uh mind opening and um uh life-changing in the sense the the way i thought about life dude mm-hmm. i mean just like the philippines you go out to the philippines and you see people happy playing in the gutters Mm -hmm. happy with what they got but when you but when you come here you go to the to the united states or anything like that any big city people are complaining yeah about their coffee bullshit the way their coffee tastes i had a i I was behind a girl at the barista at google Mm -hmm. and uh she was complaining no it wasn't a barista it was a food truck at google and the freeze food uh the food is uh, free everything's free yeah that's amazing and she was complaining how like they wouldn't give her extra sauce I was like, you work at fucking Google, you get free food, and you're complaining about extra sauce? What the fuck, dude? Yeah. Blows my mind how people like, I don't know, man. Yeah, dude. And Google reacted because they said, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say right there? This was, this was self-destruct in five seconds. Sorry, I don't know why, I, I don't know why Google went all country. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say right there, Martin? <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, dude. I um, I was I was talking. I was mentioning how I I, I just see something happening here. Yeah. That I don't want to leave. I would love to leave, um, but I can't. I don't know why. I uh, it's. And that's why I'm saying, like, even with all the concerts that I want to see out there, it's not enough for me to, to, to go out there because I know I know for a fact something's happening right now. Yeah, that's good, man. That's what I'm. That's what I'm out there looking for. Yeah, you know, just like whatever it is that draws me, attracts me. So yeah. fuck you. Are you? I'm curious. I think we talked about this a while ago. Although it's good, all the progress Guam's going through. Are you also kind of worried that? And I get this happens with all cultures, like growth is just inevitable. Mm-hmm. But do you feel like if we grow too fast or the, the route we're going, we're kind of going to lose like the beauty of, behind Guam, where it's like very just chill, relax. It's just something. You know, <clears throat> I see it changing, bro. Even yeah. from the time I left to now, especially the first time I left to now. Yeah. What was what, the biggest change you've seen? I mean, traffic, more buildings, yeah. more people in Tumon. Um, I've driven by areas that. I remember like walking through the alley to get to the beach in different parts and there's like it's locked or it's a, a building there or just it's kind of like losing i don't know what it is a Ghana shopping center is packed Ghana yeah. shopping center was fucking nothing before and yeah. i loved it you know yeah. it's like i don't know it's kind of losing what i feel it, maybe i don't know you have to lose some right it's a yeah. give and take yeah for growth is a give and take you got to lose something but you can still preserve yeah and there's people who are preserving there's people who are preserving culture there's people who are preserving language um <clears throat> but there are also people who are who are nurturing growth yeah and that's extremely important if we want to become if we want to evolve this self-determination that we're all trying to aim for right yeah we're not going to do it off the pockets of china or japan or whatever other country wants to help us when the united states is like yeah. all right guam you asked for it here it is yeah. what are you going to do with it how would how'd you feel if that happened if we were like no longer <clears throat> It's scary it's scary just cause super scary just because you think we're, we're too much of a target or no i think i think there's gonna be a i think there's gonna be a um a power struggle mm. you no know? like internally internally a- um yeah within within the people who think how guam want, it needs to go from there mm-hmm. if everything was to go away yeah right but we have to remember we have fifty one thousand people on welfare who are generationally conditioned to be on it right yeah <clears throat> and it's only going to grow it's not going to get any smaller unless people want to work unless people want change unless yeah. people want to grow and, and yeah people people will disagree with me like no nah, that's you know it's going to bring more unemployment yeah i ain't the expert i'm not a <laughs> wizard right yeah this is just shit i think about yeah you know? and it's yeah, whether it's good. right or wrong it's being thought of right yeah. um to preserve to preserve the place I think we should turn the whole South into a, into a preserve. And, and you and have to own land on Guam in mm-hmm. order to build down there. It's yeah. only residential. Isn't that other a, than that? Other than that, you can't build any big buildings down there. And that's how we keep, that's how we keep the pristine of the land down there. Yeah. Uh, you drive. I don't want to drive through Cross Island and it's fucking buildings. Yeah. Hell no. I like that. I like that valley scene. I like. I like mm-hmm. to see the grass. I like to see the rolling hills. Yeah. Oh, and and it's just one way uh and in order to do that to turn that into preserve put toll booths in chalampago or down in pago bay the bridge and you put a toll booth in agate Hmm. (laughs) like a legit toll booth like a toll booth yeah Yeah. and if you're a resident it goes into your property tax and if you're a visitor or a tourist you have to buy a pass when you enter guam and this is ways that you can fix you know like not fix government but give government additional funds right yeah. for people to use the land it's about time that we charge people for being here yeah <sighs> people people that aren't from guam you want to charge or just everyone that goes everybody through? yeah everybody if okay. you live there you're getting charged because it's part of your property tax or some kind of tax yeah. lien or whatever it is yeah uh and then if you're just someone from the north or the central you pay a local you pay a local fare yeah and then if you're a tour agency with on a tour bus then you pay a tour fare uh, you pay a fare where it's carrying 50 people or more and you just drive through it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not the expert. No, no. Man. It's it's really, I agree with you. And that's why I brought it up is because I think this is an exciting time for Guam and it's also kind of a big question mark. Mm-hmm. Again, we weren't into this shit when we were kids, but 
even as a young kid, I kind of knew that, like, oh, this is Guam. It's probably what it'll be like five, ten years from now, fifteen years from now. Yeah. You know, I think five years from now. Fuck, let's see where we're at. It's gonna change big time. Yeah, in just five years. We got the build up coming, right? I'm so confused. Maybe because I've been so out of pocket. I don't. I only read PDN like every now and then. But like, what's the status on that? Is there still like a ton of people coming, or is it still reduced? Or honestly, you don't know. I think it's it's constantly going back and forth. Yeah. I don't even I don't even know the full details. I I try not to pay too much, too attention. much attention to it. Because people get riled up when they hear like. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it, and 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 it's crazy because you know you have you have friends that you grew up with who are possibly opposing ideas than of what you know you believe in and people think that we can't oh we can't talk we can't associate ourselves with each other because it's yeah. uh it's uh we don't believe in the same thing and i don't oh, really end up arguing. like that i don't know i don't know oh, okay. but i that's what i feel like yeah. it would get to it, as long as we can talk about it and disagree with each other then we can possibly find solutions that'll work out with every for everybody yeah. I, um, I i think it's healthy healthy to disagree and to debate it's it's uh healthy but the thing is like if you're so passionate about it like this is wrong this and that but you don't provide a solution or you don't do anything i think that's where a problem comes you know because yeah. i've heard people that when i was working at gita fuck man some of my best friends were like i can't believe you're approving this and doing that i ain't doing shit i just had a fucking meeting with it man I'm just like, doing my damn job yeah <laughs> talking about the tax benefits and expecting 20 you know whatever million tours a year i'm not I'm not signing the fucking contract for the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's killer, weird. man. It's 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 killer. It's a killer time. Yeah. That's why I want to be here. I'm interested. I'm interested in what it what's what's the future. Yeah. Uh, I told I told John Moffness, I was like, yeah, we should just make the mayors make laws. I think they're the be, boots on the ground. That'd be cool, right? Because it wasn't it. I think it was with him or someone else you talked to. Wasn't it originally the mayors that kind of were the decision makers? I don't know. Village? I'm, I'm not too sure. I thought that's what I heard. Yeah. Maybe I just agree that it was a good idea. <coughs> yeah, I don't. I'm honestly, I don't even. I don't even know. Yeah. I just think the mayors, because they are, they are where the rubber hits the road. They see the people every day in their respective villages that they're at. I think it's up to them to determine what laws are being are being executed there. Yeah. Executed, implemented, whatever it may be. <laughs> I ain't a government major. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, um, are you interested in like politics at all? No. It seems like you're interested in it. No. Uh, I like to dabble. Yeah. But that's that's as far yeah. as I do it, right? Yeah. It's I mean I, I rarely talk about politics on this show. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if we're not going there. Yeah. It's it and, but it's it's important to understand and to know what's going on, yeah. whether you're passionate about it or not. Yeah. And, it is what it is in the end. Yeah. I don't know. You, there's there's people who want to fight for different things. I have a different fight in my life. Right? Yeah. I have different battles in my life. And there's things that I want to fight for to feel like when I die, I'd be like, all right. It's a good life. It was a good life. Yeah. Right? I didn't waste my I didn't waste my goddamn time. There was, I think, sorry to sidetrack again, but when you're, when you're talking about like one life and if you were to die, day two. 11 a.m. at the Hong Kong Sevens. I really thought in my head, like, man, if I were to go right now, I've lived a great <laughs> life. This is the best way to go right now. Dude. Speaking of that, we got... We got sorry, listeners. We got to make that happen, we dogs. We got to make that happen. I know. It's been... How long? 2013? Was it when we went? Three years ago? No. Yeah, oh, Three shit. years ago. 2014. 2014. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, time flies, and I think every year I was like, yeah, I'm going this year. I'm going this year. <laughs> eh, nah, uh, I'm you know, not going this year. Maybe that's what made it so fun was like, I don't, I'm not saying it's a one-time thing, but it was definitely like different for all of us, and it was like, I kind <clears> of <throat> pictured it. I think it was the very day. last time that all of us were actually not, not, in the, not in the circumstances or situations that we're in now. Yeah. Right. We had like four bachelor parties for two weddings that year, <laughs> and that was one of them. I'll never forget. They're like, "Hey guys, uh, did you have a bachelor party already?" No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. This is for this is for me and Boo. This is not. It's not for Chris and Vin. <laughs> oh, that was a great trip. Yeah, man. One life. I'm very curious to fucking to see what's going on here. I just want to die happy. That's all. Yeah. Oh. You know? That's what everybody wants. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, there's a lot of people that don't want to die happy or don't want to die at all. But it's gonna happen, yeah. and people give up. People stop giving a shit people become complacent and whether that brings you happiness or not i think a lot of people do complain though yeah right 
that it's not perfect, that we don't live in utopia. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. If you start comparing yourself to other people, like, why is that person successful and I'm not? That's, that's when you fall into a really bad place like a dark place you yeah because you're constantly comparing yourself and like I, I should be this i should be that and you're not fucking doing anything to make it like that's where it gets dangerous and i and i say that because i was there there was a lot of times i was like fuck man i'm not where i want to be that person's doing great that person's doing that and it did nothing for me it yeah. didn't make me get a better job didn't make me meet more friends it was nothing it was just waste of time waste of energy <clears throat> waste of emotions yeah i try to put it in my head like we're on our own path yeah right well uh, some paths will cross at certain times but if if we're constantly worried about like that famous picture what's that famous picture of um michael phelps right Which michael one? phelps when he, when they're barely, swimming when he barely touched no, it no it's uh it's it's the guy it's the oh, winners the winners him. focus yeah. on winning yeah and the losers focus, focus on, on the winners. winners yeah yeah pull that pull that picture up dude that was good dude Right. Good, good reference. That yeah. was like perfect timing. I got an example. I just did. <laughs> that was a great photo because I remember it was before that he was talking shit to him the whole time. Yeah. Like taunting him. Uh, the the other guy was taunting Michael Phelps. Yeah, he was ta- he, he talked stuff in the media and then like while Michael For- uh, Phelps was warming up, he was just like kind of like dancing oh, in front yeah, of him, yeah, being yeah, like yeah, a dick. Yeah, that's right. That's oh, right. there it is. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Losers focus on winners and winners focus on fucking winning. What a photo. That is a photo right there, bro. And whoever made that meme is a genius. I need to do more shoulder workouts to look like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Shit, turn it on. Let me see. Yeah, we're, we're looking at it from here. Yeah, so this is the new addition to the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I was wondering, why is it blank? <laughs> it's because uh, cause my, my big body is blocking the, <laughs> blocking the sensor here. So how much that? I'm curious, yeah. how much times did you like test this on your own before you, like you gave it a go in the in, in an actual think, like live? I event? think I tried it out with Amit and I was just like, well, well, I guess it works. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, dude. And I think this is the most this is a power the most powerful photo from the Olympics. Yeah. Right? Because people were doubting Michael Phelps because he went through that he went through the whole marijuana controversy, him hitting the bong and yeah. And him, I, I think he was, I think, I think he struggled during the qualifiers. I'm not too sure. I don't know. But he was so driven. And that, that's the, that's the photo where he's like mean yep. mugging with the headphones on and killed it, bro. Look at that. Losers, losers, losers. Man. Nice, man. And, and, and I think, I think, you know, we're, we're at that age now, right? It's like, all right, dude, I'm not worried about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I like. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a crab in a bucket anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to hide my secrets from you. I want everybody to do good. If it when it comes to podcasting, dude, I, I like. I like to see other people try and dabble into it and and actually do it and and sh- when I see them, I'm like, dude, just keep doing it. Yeah. You know? Keep putting. Keep putting it out. Yeah. Because you're you're the driver, especially when you're doing something on your own discretion. It mm-hmm. becomes a more difficult task because you're the guy who has to who has to um convince himself it's not a it's not a guy convincing another guy convincing you yeah or demanding not even convincing demanding and um i think that's why i stuck with it because it's challenging yeah there's so many challenges coming with this dude and i'm not saying i'm a winner but I, I like to I like to think I found a little bit of success in in creating something and actually like sticking to it, right? Just like music, writing songs. I've written shitty songs, but I think I've written some good songs too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And just like this. I've had shitty episodes, but I'm pretty sure there's there are some meaningful ones. Yeah. And some some with substance. But And that's like anything, man, because like even when I was simply interviewing, I did some shitty interviews. Yeah. And I thought like I did a bunch and I finally like got a rhythm going. And then you get thrown a question like, what's your favorite animal and what's your favorite color? Hmm. I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. This has nothing to do with the job. <laughs> but, you know, you, you really want to know flamingos and <laughs> red. <laughs> it was red and black. And the first thing I thought of was monkeys. <laughs> He's like, why monkeys? I was like, because they have energy and they share things. Right. I, I had no, you know, I've had interviews that bombed. Yeah. But you kind of got to do it to, you know, see what, see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. I, I try to think of my failures that I've, that I've experienced with the podcast and I've experienced many failures, dude. Yeah. Like people don't even see it. Right. Cause that's not what you, that's not what you're supposed to put out. Right. You want to put out the good stuff 
And in the podcast, you know, I try to be as real as, as I can possibly be, right? Oh, my dog is whining. Hey. Hey. Come here. Hola. No, but I think someone said this. I don't know if it was professors or just someone in general, but the most successful professor or the most successful person in the, world, in the room is also the biggest failure, or they failed the most times because it actually led them to wow, success. That's, that's awesome. Deep shit. Yeah. I think he was, he was referring to a professor that he thought was amazing. A pro- pro- professor was like, don't get me it twisted. Every professor in this room, I failed the most. And that's probably why the only reason why you think I'm good. Yeah. It's because, yeah, gave it a shot, didn't work out. <clears throat> yeah, and, I, and that, that huge fear of failure and the unknown like oh man i don't i don't know i don't know what's what's behind that door i don't i don't know i don't even want to see it yeah. i don't want to i don't want to experience it but i'm like what's the worst that can happen yeah right and yeah. and and in today's world my dad's always told me like dude no matter what you do the the worst anybody can do to you is say no mm-hmm. so my mom said they can't kill you yeah they can't shoot you they can't throw you off a off a cliff just say no walk away yeah and go find someone else yeah uh how many times was uh tim ferris's book turned down i think 24 or 25 publishers turned down his book yeah um who's the who's the alibaba guy oh jack ma jack ma jack ma that guy got fired he 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 interviewed with kfc and uh he was the only one that didn't make it through the interview process everyone got hired but him yeah. Yeah. And he got he got rejected by what over twenty universities? Yeah. Now he's one of the richest men in the world. Right? Alibaba's pretty mind blowing. It's like yeah. bigger than Amazon. Is it, is is it? I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure it is because it covers all of Asia. They keep saying it's like the Amazon of Asia. Which yeah. Asia does have Amazon, but I think Alibaba's like it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh Ali Alibaba is more towards the manufacturers than mm. Like people that make stuff, then the company yeah. itself has already made stuff. This is like, oh, you need this made. Uh, Amit was mentioning that he ha- he needed he needed something, and he he put out a query for it, got a quote, and twenty people, fifteen twenty people emailed him that day. Right? He, he put a quote. What did he he put out what he wanted and how and I don't I don't know the exact details. Yeah. Stop putting me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? What, what, did, what exactly did he say? Word for <laughs> word. Verbatim. <laughs> Verbatim. That's a good word. Let's, let's change the subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he, um, yeah, and he said, like, right there, boom. It, all of a sudden, he had 15 to 20 people who can manufacture the thing that he's looking to get manufactured. Nice. Uh, but then again, it's made in China, right? It's like, yeah. It's like, Probably last like a day or two, yeah. three weeks, then break. Yeah, it's cool, man. I think, like you said, good things are happening, and whether it's like as a whole or something big will happen on Guam, or maybe someone will take a product and just take it another level. So, yeah, I think exciting, people are, people are are smarter. Uh, not to say people are, were dumb back then. They're more open to what's going on outside of the island, rather than exactly, just sticking man. to what we what exactly we know. think. Think about how much you knew about what was going on in the world when we were in middle school and high school yeah how much you even cared about it besides when you saw it on the news and if you did it was like oh yeah yeah because now it's just shows up on your phone yeah you know, your web browser as soon as you open it up if you're looking for the news it's there yeah. as soon as you open up facebook somebody's fucking facebooking about it yeah social media is dangerous why in what way i don't know i think it and I'm talking from my own perspective. I realize it could turn people into zombies. Like they're, they're instead of going on to actually like find shit or look up shit, they're just on it just to be on it. Hmm. So what I started doing. You mean like open it, close it, and then open it back we'll up? We just start sliding. Oh. And then you're just sliding for like no reason. We could be doing something else. Yeah. So one thing I actually did, and it's really helped me personally in the last two months, um, more so when I moved to Oakland, every Sunday night, I delete all the social medias from my phone and I add it all back Friday afternoon. It sounds stupid, I know, but I do. <laughs> I know. Hear me out. That sounds, yeah, I mean, not stupid. It sounds time consuming. Dude, no, no, not at all. I mean, I still have the account. I'm just not on it. Yeah. Because I realized when I would be at work and I have some downtime, I'm just on my phone wasting time. Same. I'm in the bathroom on fucking Facebook and like no need. So I realized 
if I don't use that all during the week, I'm reading more books. I'm dabbling into new hobbies. I'm looking up uh, what hike I want to do this weekend. I'm, yeah. I'm more focused on more important shit yeah. than what the the cat is fucking yeah. screaming to his owner or whatever. Right, right. Yeah. So that's helped me. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds dumb, but it, it works. Sound, I, well, I have a friend who, my friend uh, Kenneth, he he turns off his phone at nine o'clock at night every day, and he turns it back on. Believe no wait, he turns it off at seven a.m. Mm-hmm. and then he turns it on. Wait, hold on. Let me get this straight. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds, Shut up, man! It sounds, it sounds crazy. Stop it sounds crazy in talking. my head the way I'm thinking. Uh, okay, he he shuts it off. He shuts it off at in the daytime, and he doesn't come back onto it until nine o'clock at night, and then he shuts it back off at midnight. So he's only on his phone for three hours in a day. Interesting. Does he not need his phone for like work or personal shit? Or he said, if anyone needs to call them, call him between the hours of <laughs> oh, nine and twelve. Shit, really? Yeah. What a boss. <laughs> <laughs> There's an emergency. I might be wrong. It might be seven, but I'm pretty sure it's a short. It's a very, very short span that he keeps his phone on. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I watched the. This has to do with what we're talking about. I watched the Dirty Heads at the Fox Theater in Oakland, who are fucking amazing. From the, they open, you open right, for them. Right, right, right. From the time they play to now. Fucking amazing show. Really? Such a good band. You can see how much they've evolved in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I went with just me and my cousin Britt. We mm-hmm. bought tickets. It was like 30 bucks. We're like, yeah, let's go check out the Dirty Heads. There was, I think, an hour into the show. Like, you know, we're drinking, having a good time. And, she, and she's like, Primo. And she showed me her phone and turned it off. And I was like, oh, fuck. It sounds stupid. I know. I turned off my phone. And the entire show we just enjoyed with no phone. And I didn't realize until I would constantly take out my phone and try to snap her Instagram. I was like, yeah. oh, it's off. I'm just gonna fuck enjoy it. this shit, right, right, right. and it was so relieving. It's like, why the fuck do I need to tell people that I'm? Ha- and I'm saying this when I posted paddleboarding today, <laughs> so it's a contradiction. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it was super fun and super healthy. Yeah. It's like this is what people did 15 years ago. Yeah. They just went to a show and enjoyed it, yeah. talked about it. They didn't have to promote it, post it. I mean, how much shit? I saved so much stuff for my social media. Do I ever go back and see what I did at Coachella 2014? Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's levels of the way people post, right? Yeah. Some people post 100% of their lives, and some people only post 10% of their lives. Yeah. Right? And you got to really make a determination, like, okay, which, are, which one am I? Right? It's also funny because I'm saying this right now, and I'm 100%, <clears throat> the moment I walk out this door, posting, I was on Master Red. <laughs> you guys should check it out. <laughs> episode. What episode is this? 124. One, God damn. Yeah. That was a high five. Congrats, bro. Yeah. 124. Holy yeah. shit. 41 episodes this year. Fuck. Yeah. I think, dude, the last time I was on, we didn't. you didn't even hit 100. No. Nope. Fuck. Yeah. Congrats, bro. Thanks, thanks. And that's I the think... definition right there. Just do. Yeah, just, just do it. Just keep putting out content. Even I'm sure you've had episodes where you saw like a lot of people watched it, and other episodes where barely anyone watched it, yeah, but yeah. you're fucking doing but it. But I'm not going to tell you who it is. Because I still want people back on my show. That person's ever coming back. <laughs> That's fucked up. Come no, on, no, guys. No, Come no, on, no. Guys. That's not how we play Come here. On, no. That's not how we play here. It doesn't matter how many <laughs> listens you get. It's the conversation that counts. Mm-hmm. It's the conversation that counts. But we appreciate likes <laughs> and shares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, Busting ass. Yeah, right? Like, and just like this month, this month, we're doing 10 episodes. We've done eight. This is number nine. Dang. And uh, it's, the most, it's the most I've ever done in a month. Right? How do you feel doing it? Is the... <clears throat> Is it tiring, still passionate, even more passionate? Like, how, how do you feel? Because you've been pumping out a lot lately. Yeah, I love it. Um, I just, I'm afraid to oversaturate. You know, Guam's a smaller pool of people who are willing to talk, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, compared to the States where you have millions of people. We're dealing with the hundreds of thousands. Uh, people that are willing to talk is in the range of like 5% of that 100,000 people. And... Uh, it's 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 difficult, man. It, and, and I don't. I want to. I want to do. I want to do an episode every day. But is it is it is it doable? I don't know. So, I don't know if there's that many people interested in talking to me or ha- being on the show at least, right? Doesn't and matter. So it, I know. Do I, you like doing it? I love doing it. There you go. Yeah. I think at the same time, that's where passion comes from because you maybe start something for one reason, yeah. and then you realize you're. In a sense, I don't want to say selfish, but that might be the right word. You're doing it because you enjoy doing it and you want to do it. Yeah. Like after a while, it probably doesn't really matter about 
I mean, like I said, the likes and shares obviously help, but at the end of the day, you want to meet with these people because you want to talk to them. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah, and I don't know. I I think I, so. The goal next year is to do two hundred. I want to get to get get to two hundred. So by the end of the year, I'll be at one twenty five. So that'll be oh. about seventy five episodes that I'll have to do. That's double the you know almost double what I did this year, and more than I did in. 2016 and 2015 right? yeah combined mm-hmm. um so that's gonna be the challenge that's the new challenge for for the show i don't want to i don't want to wear maddie and 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 <laughs> they're talking now. about all this and they're like fuck <laughs> <laughs> 75 we didn't we didn't agree to this shit <laughs> hey stop being passionate over there asshole i got a life to live too god damn it <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> Yeah, dude, and it, I, I think I think they're, they're they're realizing. Yeah, Matt, you guys are realizing like how much it really takes. I mean, pushing buttons isn't easy, right? It's it's it, it takes time, man. It yeah. takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of patience to to do this, bro. And uh, and I'm I'm trying to share with them like, all right, dude, like it's yeah, it's what I'm passionate about, but it's something that you guys can totally benefit off of. Yeah. Whether it's the people I'm talking to, the experiences that they share. Dude, I can say every single episode except the ones that I've been on with, like, my close friends. Yeah. I've actually, like, be, it, okay, I'm not. <laughs> sorry, man. Yeah, sorry. This has been the most uneducational <laughs> episode, ladies and gentlemen. If you're still tuning in, you might as well tune out. It ain't going to get any better than this. No, <laughs> no, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I know, I know. But I people you, that man. I don't know, right? Yeah. People that... I don't spend my time with that I don't talk to on uh, on an occasion or you know on a, on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis people that I only see because of the podcast fuck dude learn so much bro yeah, dude. so so much and I, I freak out I think and I think that is the main driver of why I keep on doing podcasts yeah and that's why even when nobody was listening when I was only getting like five downloads, it didn't matter, right? It's Oakland, like, Mighty, <laughs> Chigo, and Tenedo. Sinanya. <laughs> oh, man, we were listening, buddy. Yeah. Oh, and myself, because I wanted to listen to it. <laughs> so six. <laughs> oh, man, it's come a long way, dude. Yeah, keep, dude. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thanks. And I think that's the biggest thing, if anyone listening can get out of this, is like you said, it wasn't always easy. I mean, I talk about how like the journey was all fun and I had good times here and there, but don't get it twisted, man. There was... Before I moved, there was legit times where I was fucking lost. There was a solid like three months that I was fucking depressed, mm. like bad. Depressed. How, do, how do you handle depression? <clears throat> you got. I don't want to say you got to go through it, but I went through it, and I think what made me stronger is because I went through it and I got out of it. That's why I got this Phoenix tattooed here. I don't mm. know if I ever told you that, mm. but I got you it. You want to take off your shirt for the no. cameras? <laughs> Again, the most uneducational episode of Master Random. Here, check out my Phoenix. No, but that's 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 the truth. I mean, you go through tough shit, you experience failure because you grow from it and it I mean, again, it sounds like cliche and stupid, but it just makes you a fucking better person. Yeah. You you got to go through that pain to Oh, thanks, oh, brother. Jesus Christ. You yes. guys are amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Dude. Sorry, I'm tripping out right now. <laughs> that, 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 I, I lost it. Um yeah, uh, failure. You got to go through failure. failure. Depression. I asked you how you how you handle depression, or do you you know how do you? Uh, dude, I was lost. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah. This was before Gita when I was like unemployed for three months. It was bad, but I got mm-hmm. out of it. And you appreciate the good times more. Like, let me give you an example. I think you've seen and we talked about this. I've traveled a lot for this job. Yeah. I swear to God, every fucking time I'm in the plane and we're taking off and I look <clears> outside, I'm almost near tears because I remember, fuck. A year ago, I was fucking busting tables. I was getting rejected every fucking week. That's not an exaggeration. Every fucking week. And we talk about the big companies and Nintendo and Pixar. There was little companies, bro. Even like nonprofits. I applied for an event fucking <laughs> coordinator role at the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Didn't get that. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was like blew my mind. Yeah, but yeah. you got to go through that shit to appreciate it. Like I have a... I'm humbled, bro. I'm humbled on a daily basis out there. I trip out when I go to meetings and I'm looking at executives at Google and they're asking me questions. Man, what do you think about this? What do you think we should do? Like, you want to ask me? Yeah. Fuck. Google, Google Home. What do I say? Google Home. Right <laughs> okay, Google. What do I think? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. No. <laughs> it's listening. Don't do it. 
But yeah, man, I I think everyone has to go through that when they get cut. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm cooler than the cool wow. breeze on Mount Everest. How do you get over depression? <laughs> Buy a Google Home. $9.99, your nearest Best Buy. Ladies and gentlemen, that was fucking amazing. That was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, dude. Cooler um, than the cool breeze on Mount Everest. Uh, again, I don't, I don't mean to be all repetitive and shit, but that's that's <clears throat> the main thing. Yeah, don't, don't worry about rejection. Don't worry about what other people think. Just... Keep trucking, man, and enjoy the process. Someone told me that, Jerry. He said, Prim, you're always fucking, like, wrapped up and, like, trying to get the job. Just, dude, enjoy. Yeah. Like, enjoy the journey. And, fuck, it was a great journey, man. It reminds me of when we play poker with you and your brother. <laughs> We're not enjoying it. Yeah, you're not enjoying <laughs> playing poker. You're trying to take all our fucking money. No, Chris is. He's a bully when it comes okay, to the chips. Okay. Do you and, guys and still play or no? No. Yeah, just because of that fact. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh. like, just like... All right, all right, all right. Who's betting? Betting? Bet, bet, bet. No, no, no. Mullen, Mullen, Mullen. Oh, I lost. I got a 5 3 unsuited. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's it's real, though. It's real. If you if you don't enjoy the 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 journey, isn't. I mean, the success and the happiness isn't the end game. The success and the happiness is what you put yourself, you put yourself through to get to where you want to be. And I think too much people are focused on the end game. They want the success. Boom. That was like yeah. me. I yeah. moved out there. Had five interviews. I thought, boom, I'm going to be successful. Yeah. Nope. And I was so focused on end game. But yeah. fuck, dude. If it wasn't for the journey, it wouldn't have been worth it. I was talking to this girl and, you know, I was like, oh, so what do you do? She's like, oh, I go to school, you know, and this and that. And uh, I don't, I'm so confused. I don't know what I really want to do in life. And uh, I just, uh, I was like, wait, how old are you? <laughs> 19 I was like yeah, you're 19 yeah. I was like Gina. my dilemma was are we going to casa or venue tonight that was my dilemma when I was 19 holy shit I was like honestly enjoy whatever you're trying to get into get into things and fail at it mm-hmm. if you, it doesn't work out for you it doesn't work out for you yeah but you're 19. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Like you're not gonna find. I mean, yeah, some people will find success when they're 19, 20 to 25. But most of us find it in our 30s. You have a lot of time to do this. You can tell I'm all up on Gary Vee, man. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, he's dude. like instilled in my brain. I was like, <clears throat> the only time I've ever fangirled in my life was when he messaged me on uh, when I landed in New York. Yeah. I've never experienced that. Like when a celebrity, or I've never cared. I'm like. You're the first person I texted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you fucking responded. <laughs> he also told me to join his wine club. I don't like wine, but I'm joining. God damn it. I get fucking so many emails. Gary Vee, I love you. Thank you for inspiring us. But damn, I got to stop. I got to unsubscribe to the wine club. I'll subscribe to everything else with the wine club. So you pay 55 bucks a month? No. God damn uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah man. man. It's, uh, it's, but that's the truth. And that's what I love about him. You know, he's, he's very cold, uh, not cold, but he's upfront, right? He's blunt about everything and. He tells you what's real. Yeah. And if you're young and you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what you want to do, that's okay. Yeah. I think, and I'll leave it at this, this is the last fucking inspirational thing I say. My favorite quote is by Messi. And I, I think about it all the time where uh, I showed up early, I stayed late day in and day out, and it kind of went on a little bit and he ended with, it took me 19 years, f- four months, 22 days to become an overnight success. And I was like, yeah. Damn, that's, that's real shit right there. Yeah. Everyone's focused on the end game, and yeah, dude, it takes time. It takes time. I don't even think I've reached there. We're talking about how I'm not, I'm not uh, comfortable yet. Yeah. I don't think I've even scratched the you surface. Did? You're right. Did it? Yeah. Sorry, folks. Oh, shit, I never plugged it in. It's good. I didn't want anyone looking at me during this podcast, anyways. Hello, world. Okay, we just had a camera malfunction. That's all. What happened here? Well, S- speaking of speaking of technology, uh, have you seen the latest on this robot that does push-ups and actually sweats? No. So the it sweats. It's a robot they just created that does push-ups and sweats, and the sweat attributes to how it's performing and how it acts, which is pretty fucking scary. Think about that for a second. If a robot is already doing that. How much time from now until the robots become our successors? Think about that for a second. I don't think it's long. Isn't that kind of like... I think, I think was it Google? Was it Google the one that they had to stop this language thing? That mm. they, they created something that was able to understand language, but it was understanding it so well that they had to like stop the program? It was, it was either that or something else similar to this where 
I was also tracking what people were saying in their homes. Hmm. You know, so you could like kind of like put a bug in someone's house. Right. With a product. Right. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh-oh. We need to start unplugging that shit. I said too much. <laughs> Ask it the weather <laughs> and eight times fifty four. Turn that motherfucker up. <laughs> and unplug that shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, we need, we need we need to go back to CD players. <clears throat> CD players are the shit. Fuck CDs, man. Really? Honestly, you were a fan? Oh, hell no, dude. <laughs> dude, man, I have I I'm I'm very clumsy. Yeah. And I would drop a scratch CD it. and that should mm. scratch, man. I I think when the iPod came out, that was the greatest invention ever. Yeah. Um, to I, put hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of songs onto a little device, and you don't have to carry the CD booklet with your CD books. Yeah. You know the it has four on one side, four on the other side. And, yeah. And then you put the booklet in with the CD, and it's like weighs twenty five pounds because yeah. it's just CDs and books. And after you listen to like a whole album, you're just like, oh fuck, it's starting all over again. Like, yeah. gotta change the CD. Yeah. It sounds so petty. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's first world problems. Yeah, there are worse problems in the world. S- speaking of music, uh, not totally sidetracked, but I'll never forget. So there's times where I was like, I wouldn't get a job and I was down and I'd go running, like mm-hmm. running through the hills, running river. And I always remember, I normally run with music, mm-hmm. but I'll never forget when Dr. Schumann was on this show. And he said like, hey, if you need music to get you up in, in day, do it, you know, go run. But I really think everyone should at least once a week, or let's say you run once every other week. Let's say that. Mm-hmm. At least once a month, run with no music and no one by yourself. And I remember when he said it, I was like, oh, fuck. It's <clears throat> true, man. I'd run like three, four miles, and I'm just by myself, no music to my thoughts. And I think that's super fucking healthy. For me, though, when I run, <clears throat> I if I focus too much on my breathing... Then I sort of lose my rhythm. (laughs) 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 Sounds like you're giving birth. (laughs) Sorry. And so, like, my rhythm of my breath has to go with the rhythm of my feet, but at a slower pace. And if I'm listening to, if I'm not listening to music, I focus too much on my breathing. Yeah. But then I feel like I'm not breathing well. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't work out for me for some reason. Yeah. Uh, I've tried it before, but fuck, dude. I'm just like, well, we're cutting this run short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, music died. Cutting yeah. the music short. I guess I can walk home now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a really powerful thing with um, with running and being able to stay mentally strong. But I, I guess that's what it builds, right? It builds mm-hmm. mental strength in not sort of distracting yourself from the fact that you're putting your body through physical stress, but you're now accepting the fact that you're putting your body through physical stress and you're not letting the you're not letting automatic take over Mm -hmm. right and that's what i do i I let i let how my body reacts with my with the way i'm running and i just let it take over me instead of sort of being in control yeah which is why i can only run a mile (laughs) (laughs) but man i'm in control for that entire mile Let me tell you, I can listen to four straight songs. <laughs> <laughs> Unbroken. <laughs> Unbroken. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, dude. This is fun, man. Thanks yeah. for having me again. Fun shit. How long have we been going for? I don't know. How long have you been here? Hour like, 30. Oh, shit. 30. Shit, bro. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> listeners. Sorry. We did touch on some really good points, though. Yeah. You know? um, there, there was a, there, there's a lot of, there has to be a lot of failure in life, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, Michael Jordan, all the greats said it, right? Mm-hmm. Gotta fail. Gotta fall down seven times and get up eight. And I think you only really understand it as you get older. Mm -hmm. And you're really focusing on because now we're at that age. Like, shit, I'm I'm turning thirty. I don't want to be doing the same shit when I'm forty. Yeah. Like, what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do to get myself further than I am now? Yeah. I fucked around too much when I was twenty. Right. It's also. It's hard, man, because I've I know people and I've actually like heard of people out there, on fucking social media or wherever that people that have been, anytime they fucked up in life, they had someone to like catch them or take care of them, hmm. you know, and that's very scary, especially <clears throat> if like you get into your thirties and forties and you still have never really really experienced failure without someone like picking you up and dusting you off, yeah, or like someone like getting you out of trouble, you know, you gotta go through that shit because if you just babied your whole life when you're finally put in like a real situation, you're gonna dude, you're gonna freeze, you're gonna freak out, yeah, you know? panic, yeah. 
Mom, Dad. <laughs> I want to come home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> Sorry. Kid, you're 35 years old. Yeah. You figure that shit out you, yourself. You a grown ass man. <laughs> Fear. Fear. Yeah, uh, it's important. And thanks, bro. Thanks yeah, for, yeah. for coming on. I'm, it's it's good to have you back. It's good to and, be back, uh, dude. It's good to see all you boys. Yeah. I'm so fucking pumped for what's coming next for this, bro. I know I say this all the time and I talk to you, but I've been pumped since day one when you said it at the group and that. Come episode two hundred, might be even more pumped. Yeah, uh, boys, dude, you got some crazy shit in here. Yeah, hopefully by well, hopefully I'm not in here, right? True. That's the goal. That's yeah. the goal is to get out of here and uh, have 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 a have a studio going. Yeah, that's the that's the big goal there. But keep striving, man. We'll see Don't how quit. that goes. Yeah, thanks, bro. You wanna you wanna put anything out there before we uh, head out of here? Not really. I think I said enough inspirational shit. <laughs> I think uh I think the biggest thing Shout is shoutouts. How people can follow yeah, you? Man. Um, no, no one follow me. I'm what? <laughs> Um, the biggest thing I can say is you don't have to fucking pack your bags and quit your job and go fucking out there. You know, you don't have to. You can easily be on Guam, just like what you said you're doing, uh, what a lot of people are doing here. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a fucking great painter, if you want to open up a surfboard shop, if you want to open up a restaurant, a uh, food truck, whatever, just do it. Yeah. And if you don't know how to do it, fucking ask questions. Where <clears throat> someone will say is no, or at least they'll point you in the right direction. Yeah. A uh, perfect example is Ray, right? Ray Charkoloff, he mother. <laughs> freaking guy freaking guy uh I, I was gonna call him a motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> and then he stopped right no, there. Stop. but it's not bad it's not a bad motherfucker it's a good motherfucker yeah. that guy like didn't know anything about food the industry yeah. never worked in the food industry food and beverage in- industry and where's he at now he owns yeah. i think i think he owns it's safe to say he owns one of the most successful food trucks here on guam right but is Currently, it heavy, heavy hitters or no? No, no, no uh, Fat, uh, Fat, Boy, Fat Slim. Boy Slim. Yeah, yeah. there's been a lot coming up. A little bit of, of healthy trucks. and ha- happy. Yeah, yeah and <clears throat> for just for that, just taking the chance, taking a risk, and mm-hmm. being being open to doing anything. Um, it, it's it's not gonna. It's, it'll bring you down. It'll put you through spurts of sadness and stuff. But if you just keep pushing, eventually the universe will unfold as it should. Yeah, man. Yeah, I got one more thing. Do yeah. you? Uh, I've, I've been asking a lot of people, or at least the last five guests. Do you meditate at all? Not meditate. I used to do a, a good amount of yoga when I first got my knee surgery yeah. from rugby. Um, I liked it a lot. Meditate. If there's one way I think I can meditate, and this one I was actually driving or every day on BART. So I told my mom like I try to go to church every week, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I get more out of it when I'm on the freeway by myself, or I'm on BART by myself, heading to work, and I'm just like fuck like it blows my mind every day going in to the city or seeing the bridge up to now i've seen the bridge so many times but just looking at it so that's my form of meditation even if it only lasts like 10 seconds or i'm chilling there for five minutes by myself or even when i'm with friends and not saying anything that's my form of meditation do i do it on my own or at yoga no but i get a lot i get more out of that sorry mom to be honest i get more out of that than going to an hour church and doing the same let's sit let's stand let's pray let's hold hands as our father sit stand pray hold hands and do this mm-hmm. that blows my mind when i'm doing the other stuff yeah yeah do you meditate um <clears throat> i reflect a lot damn um, dude, you're good with words I, I i that one word was everything i just said <laughs> fuck i should have just said i reflect <laughs> It would have been done. No one would have to listen to anything else. Fuck, dude. No, no, no. That's yeah. why you're Master Rand. No, well, I, I don't know. I think I think you talk to enough people, you, you start learning new words like reflect. It's like, Matt, shut up. You're trying to say reflect. No, no I reflect. When I walk my dog twice a day, you know, okay. it's my time to, to be by myself, to be in my little element. This guy doesn't talk to me when we're walking together. Yeah. And um, just sort of uh, put in order what's out of order. Right. My whole life isn't out of order, but there's some things that kind of fall out of order and how I need to bring it back into order. Um, yeah. And it's been important for me, dude. It's been super integral in my life since <clears throat> since I've been taking these walks and, dude, ever since I had him. Right? <clears throat> and so, yeah, yeah, it's important, super cool, important. I think that is important no matter what you do, whether you go on a walk with your dog or you just like, Take a step back. I think that's the word I meant. Like, just take a step back and like take it all in. What you're doing, where you're at, how you got there. Even if it's a, even if you're going through a tough time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool, man. Yeah. So what? You don't want anyone to follow you? No, man. I mean, you don't want to put probably, out your phone number? No. <laughs> my, maybe my Guam number, and it'll be gone in a week and a half. <laughs> no, I guess if I shout out, shout out to my family for always being there for me, my friends through the good and the bad. My nephew and niece are gonna listen to this one day and be like, man, my uncle was weird. 
I love you guys. I love everybody. And yeah, man, it's good to be home and good to be here. Hell yeah. Thanks, Boo Dog. Thank you, Matt. Cheers, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, cheers, Mike. Cheers. One last cheers till the end. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining. If you're watching on Facebook Live, I don't know if there's anybody watching on Facebook Live. It's it's there. Yeah. Uh, but if you're watching, uh, thank you. Thank you. Put it on Matt. Put it on Matt real no. quick. No. <laughs> Now they see who I am. It's gonna get weird. Yeah, <laughs> but no, thank thank you. Uh, the Facebook Live thing is totally just a new thing for us, and uh, you know I think Matt and Brian has had enough practice to where they can <laughs> they can be trusted to do this shit and um and awesome. make it look good, right? Yeah. And uh, we got we got some new shit coming up on the podcast, and it's uh it's exciting. It's super exciting. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, uh, go to go to Patreon. Uh, Master Adam has a Patreon account there. Become a patron of the podcast. Uh, you would, if you donate two dollars, you'll be on the newsletter. That's just a support. You're you're just a supporter, and and we can use the support to grow the show. If you want to donate five dollars a month, um, yeah, you get all the behind the scenes shit. How we set up. Uh, we're working on Matt and Brian a uh, cooking show. Ooh. So uh, some secret shit. Bam. Boom. <laughs> Make a bomb ass grilled cheese, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just just like behind the scenes stuff, uh how we set up, how you get things going, uh put out videos for you guys and um uh it's a little bit extra for those who want to, you know, donate that much. Uh, I hate asking for money, but you know, it's the show has to grow, right? Yeah. And this is uh Michelle Pierre came on. Uh, Ari Ritson came on, and they're both like, "The fuck are you doing?" <laughs> Seriously. Of course, you're why to aren't the woman. you? Yeah. Oh, yes. Why aren't you on Patreon yet? <laughs> yeah, this isn't, I've heard of it. I just, yeah. you know, and I find we finally put it together, and you know, oh, yeah. if we reach the what is it, Matt, the five hundred dollar goal? <clears throat> if we reach the five hundred dollar goal, you will pay for a <laughs> meal. For Matt and Brian to eat oh, every sure. episode, and so that's the goal. Fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that'll buy them a steak at Payless and uh, uh, have them cook it up in the stove right there. there and go, uh, it, it, it may it may be free feed three to four people in the arms of an angel. Can we please leave off on that? That was the perfect <laughs> way to end the episode. That was beautiful. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, Friday, Brian Munya. Hell yeah. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. And this episode will drop on all the platforms that we're on tomorrow. So, yeah. Shit. Thank you, everybody. See Thank you, Maddie. See you, Guam. Thanks, Boo Dog. Yeah. Peace out. Cool. <laughs> that was fun. <gasps> Thanks, bro. Thanks, man. That was fun. Uh. Wait, go back.